guess what? Just a moment ago, I um, recorded about 30 minutes of a 30 minutes. The broadcast was about 30 minutes, and thanks to the internet, um, the stream was very, very poor. So I am going to be back again, going back over what I just actually streamed. I didn't realize it, but here we are. Okay, so here I am back again. And um, the question or the topic is why? And I want to speak a bit about character. I notice, for whatever reason it is, we tend to look at this word character and I don't know if many persons know exactly what they put on my hater blockers what character actually means now according to Google character speaks to one's mental and moral state it says mental and moral state so what that says to me is we would normally use the term someone has character or you should have character but it's actually whether you should have good character or bad character because there's a difference. Now I want to share with you an experience that I had. Um, in 2019 right before the hurricane um, my wife and I purchased a vehicle and it came with one key. But this one key that the vehicle came with uh, we said it really doesn't make much sense for us to have only one key. We wanted to get another key cut, but not knowing, not knowing with these modern vehicles that there's a two-step process where the key has to be cut and then it has to be programmed. So we carried it to someone that was recommended to us. And this particular person, after three days, was unable to uh, get the key programmed and as a matter of fact what they did is they shut the vehicle down so the vehicle was unable to start at all and um, at the end of the whole fiasco the person still levied a charge of $250 um, despite the fact that they put the vehicle in a worse state than it was before we came and um, speaking with um, my wife wasn't on board with us paying. She wasn't on board with us paying uh, the money, but I left it up to the person to have good character and say, you know, I realize that I put you in the state, and um, as a result, what we'll do is we'll forego the charges. But of course, he didn't. So I said, okay, I paid. And in the meantime, he had stripped the vehicle down and didn't put it back together properly. Um, door panels were still not affixed properly and I had to tow the vehicle to um, someone else who uh, was able to get the vehicle up and running for another couple hundred dollars well. And um, it was such a poor experience that we had to think that someone um, knowing that they were fully responsible for demobilizing the vehicle and not taking responsibility. I wondered, I wondered what type of conscience or what type of character this person have. But in any event, um, be it as it may, many of us may have experiences such as that where persons would just not exhibit good character when they're dealing with certain situations. So um, I noticed I want to address this thing called the blue ticks, the gray ticks, and the blue ticks. And many of us have WhatsApp on our phone. For Apple users, you don't have, um, I think, WhatsApp. But in any event, for the WhatsApp users, you are very, very familiar with this. Whenever you are texting someone, they have now the ability to turn off their notification or the blue ticks, to let, um, which would let the sender know that their message was received and was waiting a response. So now they would they with with the with the with the with the um, ability to turn off these blue ticks 
now I have them as critics, right? I realize that people now are putting themselves in positions where they are actually avoiding um, certain persons or certain messages or taking forever to get back to individuals because now you can say, well, you don't know whether or not I got your message because, um, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, um, blue, um, which meant um, it wasn't received in red. So I sum it up to the same thing what I call the spirit of importance. Getting right back to that now. It just seems as if everybody now is operating in this vein where they think that they are or their time is more important than somebody else's time. So as a result of that, you have this situation where, hey, listen, I am so busy that I don't have really time to get back to you when um, when you reach out to me. Um, um, in other words, sit small, tell your name, call. Now, I would tell you, I spent many years in the insurance business. As a matter of fact, I uh, was the manager of two of the largest insurance companies here on the island. And during my time in management, anyone who I had, who I actually dealt with, right? Anyone who I actually dealt with, right? Would tell you that anybody who came to see me at any point, at any, any point, I made it a point to see these individuals. It didn't really matter. I never operated where I would just duck them or not um, um, see them for whatever reason it was because I realized it was because of these people. These people are the reason why I was being paid and my family was, you know, my children were the beneficiaries of, of, of these persons supporting the business. And as a result, I made sure that I treated all of them fairly. As a matter of fact, I would venture um, out on um, what we call the debit from time to time to collect premiums, sometimes only $2 a week. Premiums from individuals sit in their house and deal with them um, just as if I was dealing with someone who was paying a premium of $100. And I realized that a lot of persons lack that ability and they tend to just put themselves, it's a form of social stratification, I guess you want to say, but they, they put them, you know, up at, at, at a certain level or below a certain level. And as a result of me placing you um, at this particular point uh, on the social strata, that means you get treated uh, the way I want to treat you, which is unfair. Everyone is suffering from this Hollywood spirit where they want to act as if they are celebrities and they are so important and they have so much going on that, listen, you're supposed to understand, you're supposed to understand, you're supposed to understand that, hey, I, I am busy and um, you just wait until I can get to you. Well, I don't subscribe to it and I think you know, it boils down to what type of character, what type of, of conscience do you have as an individual? How do you um, um, treat persons as if their time has less value than yours because of your position? Whether you, you know, you, you were, 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 were at the top of the ladder at a very large company or you're, you're top of the ladder in a government office or whatever the case may be, somewhere in the midst of you being appointed, you get to think that your time is more important. Your mere time is more important than somebody else's time. And I think that that is just so unfair. And you need to really, really take a look at it and adjust yourself. Here's the reason why you need to take a look at it and adjust yourself. You know, while I was servicing, while I was servicing these persons, um, I, I realize that persons who are um, senior going into these homes on various occasions, I realize that family members totally stop checking for senior citizens. Their children wouldn't check for them. The only person that they would have who they could actually lock down for a while was the insurance agent. Whenever the insurance agent come, they would be able to, to, to hold them hostage and start to speak about the times when they had prominence, speak about the time when they had positions and what they did when they had it and how they did this and that. And now 
they're at a point where everybody thinks that they're irrelevant, they're old, they're just waiting to go and see the master. So as a result of, of me being uh, in that position where I realize that God have it for you to get to that state, you're going to get to a point where all of your activities are going to come to a slow pace or to a halt. And as a result, as a result, um, um, you're going to see where, where you're going to now um, um, start to reflect. You're going into this reflection stage, right? And it's going to become a very lonely place if you didn't secure proper relationships where, you know, you, you had fictitious relationships based on your position. So you had persons, yes men and yes women around you, just just giving you all type of attention and, and making you feel as if you are so important and, and you have this going on, that going on, but you didn't secure genuine relationships with your family. So now you are at the age where, hey, you're done, you're finished. They're not interested. They're not interested now in seeing you. They're not interested now in, 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 in taking time to spend with you. So my advice to persons who are in this position, re, you know, reevaluate your character. Go and check how you handle people, how you deal with people, and try to fix fix this before you get to that point where you're going to be retired, maybe a bit lonely. All of these people now who you had influence over, who you had connections and relationships with, which was fictitious and only based on the fact that you had a position, they're going to mosey on out. And the only people you're going to have now is those family members or those relationships that were genuine, that you formed, that was would, would now put you in a position where you say, hey, Life is worth living because I would have made some meaningful relationships. I speak to a number of senior people and I realize that if you are blessed to get to that age, you will be covering it. Now, this is another thing that I um, noticed that is happening as a result. You know, they always tell you a little to show you what a lot look like, right? And these same blue tick things that I'm talking about, most persons who decide to turn them off, they have similar character traits. And when I say similar character traits, they um, would be in this position where, you know, they would be in this position where um, um, you would have um, certain things that they would do. You notice that only these type of people do these, these type of things. For example, they tend not to ever return your call, or if they do, um, um, they always have some lame excuse as to why they couldn't respond or whatever the case would be. And the artificial intelligence or the smartphones now have these things built in where you don't even have to type as much. They have these auto-respond messages, get back to you. I'm on the phone, I'll call you back. You know, these are some simple things that they already have um, already programmed into the devices. And I think these things are programmed into the devices to really expose you for who you are. You're so busy. You, you, you have this going on. You have that going on. Uh, you're too busy to just use the thumb or the, or the finger just to tell the person, hey, listen, give me five minutes, give me ten minutes. No. What it is is you're too important for them and they don't have, they don't need you. I mean, you don't need them, sorry. They need you. So seeing that you don't need them, you will get back to them when you are good and ready. But I'll tell you, for, for the most part, um, you would eventually see where persons would start to, to, to get the picture. And I could see you moseying on into your old age where, or your senior years where you can become very, very lonely. Now, nobody, everybody likes a genuine person. Everyone likes someone who has good character. Every, a lot of things that you enjoy really is based on the fact that you have persons who have good character. Just imagine if you were driving a vehicle and your wheels just fell off. You would be, you would be very, very upset that, that, that someone sold you something or manufactured something that was faulty and you would want some type of justice. Well, it boils down to the character. Right? It boils down to character, and at the end of the day, when when the, the dust really settles, the person who promised to keep, who, who promised to um, 
who promised to deliver this particular device to you, um, they didn't live up to what they were supposed to because it it, 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 it bottles down to to, to um, let me tell you, some some persons just came out, and I think what happened is they're doing sign language and they're talking loud, so I do apologize for them. So in any event, they just came out to the beach and they have a right to enjoy the beach just like me. So when you hear that no one is in trouble, uh, they're just enjoying the beach, okay? But in any event, you know, you would be livid if somebody decided to sell you something faulty. It boils down to their character. They're supposed to stand behind their, their, their product. They say the product is going to do A, B, C, or D. That's what you expect to get from that, from that product. So if they had the same mentality that you had, chances are you would end up with a faulty piece of equipment and something that is not worth even having and you definitely wouldn't be pleased with that so consider that now i'm getting on to this thing i have a, a, a an issue also i have persons who you know would book a rental spot i have um units for rent and i mean as sure as you see this ocean in the back of me and the sunshine and they would tell me i'm gonna be by you at um, four o'clock today to put a deposit down four o'clock would come and go and they wouldn't show the next day they would call and say oh you know, I, I need you to check this, check that, and, and I'm coming to you six o'clock. Six o'clock would come and pass, no show, no call, nothing, nothing. You understand? And I'm like, I'm, am I crazy or is it it's just me? Something isn't wrong with that picture. Like, how do you, how do you promise someone so faithfully that you're coming to do something? and you just don't do it. I was not raised like that. I can't even imagine what that would be like. Just telling someone, I'm coming at such and such a time, don't show up, don't call, and then you're supposed to get the message. I, I don't get that. It's a character flaw. That's a character flaw, and many persons, many persons today are suffering from that. I had an electrician, same thing, was supposed to complete some work, and for whatever reason, things happened, and they refuse to call, they refuse to say, and I'm like blown away. How do you how do you operate in a way where you promise someone five consecutive times that you're coming to do something, you don't do it, you don't call and you don't show up, and you don't have a problem with that. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, when I speak with my kids, I always tell them, you know, you, your word is supposed to be a bond. You want, when you give your word, your word is supposed to mean something. That should stand for something. When someone says, okay, George said he was going to do this, they know that George is the type of person he's going to show up and he's going to do it. But today, people, it, it's, I don't know, help me out. People are like, they're losing it. You know, tell me if, if I am wrong or something, or I'm, I'm missing the boat. Let me know in the comments if that's what it is because I don't get it. And it seems like as time goes on, it's getting worse and it's getting worse. How do you expect the world to be a better place when you have people who lack good character? You have persons, and listen, in the church especially, you have people who stand uh, on the name of Jesus Christ, they're Christians, and to a certain extent, a lot of them, they're the worst that come into my business. I don't, I, I can't trust them, I can't give them credit because at the end of the day, they don't pay and they have no problem with it. How in the world could you call yourself a Christian and your word means nothing? You you decide that you're going to do this and, and do that and, and you don't do it, you don't say anything about it. I am at loss as to how people operate that way. Now, as far as bill payment is concerned as well, this is a character issue again. You have persons who just run bills, and I'm not saying we're not gonna be in debt, unless unless you inherit a whole lot of money from somewhere, most of us will carry debt. But now, at the same time, while we carry debt, how is it that we do not do our best to repay or at least communicate with the persons that we owe and say, hey, I'm having a struggle, this is what it is, I need you to pardon me, please, or to assist me or help me get over this hump. I'm going to do my best to see if I can cancel this debt. Um, and um, I expect you to expand, extend courtesy to me to, to give me some lenience. How is it people just don't do it? I don't know. Most of us carry debt, 
and in le unless you 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 are um, um, in a position where you don't have any type of contact, no phone, no no um, email, nothing. I can't get why it is you won't reach out to the people who extend the credit. When someone extend credit to you, that is a trust factor, especially credit without any type of interest accruing. You know, you you're looking at persons who who would have rendered a service and just decided to give you a hand up. And what you decide to do is put put your foot on them and push them down. We need to really, really consider that. It comes right down to assume values. When I say assume values, we assume somebody has a certain worth or a certain value. So guess what we do with these people? We only give them what we think they deserve, which is the bottom of the barrel. How in the world could we operate that way? We ought not to operate that way. We need to treat everyone as a human being and treat them equal. The reason why, you never know when things can change. Things can change. And I will use the same case in point. Who would have thought that the gentleman who just received the deal, a lot of persons are looking at the $600,000 deal that he got on Shark Tank. Mr. Gibson from Freeport, Bahamas, or his descendant of the Bahamas. And they look at 600000 and they say, oh, he just got a deal for 600000 What they fail to realize is this young man already made $1.5 million. The 600000 was really to help up the, 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 the sharks buy shares into his company and give him the experience for him to just soar to, to greater heights. Like he said, he, he wanted to be the best CEO there was. And that is what the 600000 was all about. But who would have thought that the same young man one day would be in that position? Now you're going to know. You know how we do as Bahamians. Everybody know him now. Everybody wants to give him their time and want to hear from him. And if he calls, they're going to be falling over themselves trying to return the call and all that kind of stuff. And that's nonsense. we got to stop because you don't know who the next millionaire is going to be. Nobody knows who, who's going to be the next Buddy Heal, the next John Quell Jones. You know what I mean? Nobody knows who's going to be the next Charles Chisholm. Nobody knows. So you have to treat everyone as if their time has worth and value. So now with that being said, I want you to leave your comments um, in the comment section and let me know what you think about what I shared with you today. And I trust that you would have just an awesome Sunday. And with that being said, I'm going to leave you now and please enjoy what God has prepared for you because he had prepared something for each and every 